Alrighty, so today we're going to study the structure in Shakespeare's Sonnet 12 and William Wordsworth's um, We Are Seven. I'd like uh, everybody to begin by reading Shakespeare's poem twice. What you guys will realize is that this poem showcases the passing of time as it exemplifies itself in nature, and there are many uh, examples of the passing of time in this poem. One of the first examples is found on the first uh, line, when the clock that tells time, and then the second line, and see the brave day sunk in hideous night. These two lines are describing the passing of time from day to night. Then we read, when I behold the violet past prime, and sable curls all silver or, silvered o'er with white, on lines three and four, and these lines could possibly represent an elderly person who had once been young but now has aged. Uh, on line eight we read, with white and bristly beard, which represents the passage of use. These words could uh, create an illusion to frighten the old man for not having created a child when he could have. Finally, we read lofty trees and barren leaves on line, line five, which is directly referencing uh, the infertility of this old man because he is now aged. On lines 13 and 14, we read, And nothing gainst time's scythe can make defense, save breed to brave him when he takes thee hence. Now what does this mean? In these two lines, the poet is making a final point that bearing children is the only way of gaining mortality. Time scythe is a traditional image of death, usually depicted by a skeleton bent over holding a scythe, which is a tool used to cut wheat. What these lines mean is that his only way to make defense against time is to breed, which would prefer preserve his youth in offspring. Now, uh, in lines 8 and 9, all, and summer's green, all girded up in sheaves, born on their beer with white and bristly beard. It's describing something being taken away. Um, the poet describes harvested crops being carried, but I'd say it's a metaphor for an old man being carried to the church. Um, and so I think this man is being taken to the church by people he doesn't know because he, he didn't... Um, have children when he could have, um, and so he has no family to take him to church when he, uh, to the church when he's died. Um, Shakespeare references three colors in this poem. What are they? He references the colors violet, green, and white. The first is found on the third line when we read, "When I behold the violet past prime." The following line uh, is on line four, and sabled curls all silver oared with white. And finally, on line seven, we read, and summer's green all girded up in sheaves. Now, what could these colors symbolize? Now, the Shakespeare is creating a parallel between the aging of nature and that of human life. He contrasts violet and summer's green with the white of age. The two colors, violet and green, symbolize the man's youth. Um, these colors have more life in contrast to the white of age. Because white isn't even a color, it is a shade. And so technically, this poet could be making a connection with age. Um, and... Oh, pardon me. M uh, making a connection with age. And so I'd say he's... Oh, shoot. White isn't even a color, and it's, it's pretty much. White isn't even a color. It's technically a shade, and in this case, the poet isn't making a positive connection with age, and so I think it is right to associate a shade with this part of life. Um, the rhyme scheme in William Wordsworth We Are Seven is very straightforward, it's just the usual A B A B rhyme scheme and each stanza has four lines. But at the beginning of the poem, William Wordsworth creates a sense of eeriness. He says, uh, he writes, what should it know of death? Uh, referring to the young girl who, what should she know of death? 
which creates an eeriness because um, he is introducing um, a young child and their innocence and how naive they are and how they deal with death. And it's just not something you usually think of. Uh, a child and death, you wouldn't think of that in the same sentence. Um, now, the majority of this po the the whole poem is a discussion between the author and the young girl. Now, the, they are discussing where her family are, uh, is. Um, she explains that two are in a town called Conway, and two of us at Conway dwell. That's on line 19. And then on line 20, uh, she explains that two of them are at sea, and two are gone to sea. And then she says that two have passed away. Two of us in the churchyard lie on line 21. She keeps telling the author, though, that there's seven in all, which is funny because two of them has passed, have passed away. Now, the author can't come to understand why she keeps saying um, this, but I think what William Wordsworth is trying to explain is how children deal with the idea of death. In fact, um, he's showing that children deal with death much easier, much better than adults because an adult would grieve uh, the death of a loved one for a long time, whereas an innocent child would move on and accept the changes, like the girl in the poem. She doesn't really think of her um, having lost two siblings. She just thinks of them still being there. She doesn't really dwell on the fact that they're not really there in person. Um, and now, the poem was written in 1798, and back then, people died of things such as even just colds or fevers and flus and so it was common for people to die back then so that's probably what her siblings died of. I uh, Now, they're both very symbolic uh, poems, but I actually prefer uh, William Wordsworth's pro poem because I feel that just with the fluidity that it has, it although it does discuss a darker topic, uh, when you read it uh, with just the flow of the poem, it, it creates a lighter feeling. And also, it's just, although it does discuss, it is focusing on the death of uh, the little girl's two siblings, it's nice to read, like, about her innocence towards, um, the idea of death. Now, I have a little quiz for everyone, and I will hand that out right now.